Hello everybody, welcome to Red Toolhouse. On our channel we talk about all things homesteading and we try to implement some of that on our rural 100 acres in the mountains of southern West Virginia. Well, we're finally getting some much needed rain here. It's been a little dry on the homestead the past several weeks. In fact, I'm trying to keep my mic dry, so I've got it tucked up under one of my chins here. See if that'll help. So if you hear a little scratching, that's one of my chins rubbing against it. But we're finally getting the rain we need. Since it's raining, I thought I'd take this opportunity to share a video that I actually shot about this time last year. It was actually last July. But in July here in West Virginia, the blueberries, uh, that's when they become ripe. And there's a really neat farm that we go to. It's about a two hour drive from us. It's on the eastern part of the state in, in a little town called Rennick. And Max Robinson and his wife own this blueberry farm. It's called White Oak Farms. And uh, we, we've been going there for years, probably 10 plus years picking blueberries. It's a pick your own. He's got uh, multiple blueberry fields under netting uh, to keep the birds out and just does a really good job. I think he says he has about 2,600 blueberry plants. So um, it's a very cool setup. Well, we shot a video. We interviewed him, talked to him about it because I thought it was interesting. Um, he doesn't consider himself a homesteader, but he makes his entire income from his blueberry fields. Uh, he homeschools his kids, they, they do a lot of gardening, they do basically everything that you'd think a homesteader would do. He just really doesn't consider himself a homesteader. But it's really cool. I, I enjoyed sitting down talking with him. He shared a lot of information with me. And I wanted to share that with you all so you could see how his blueberry operation works and kind of see his layout. So I'm going to go ahead and cut away to that footage and then I'll meet you here at the end. I'm Max Robinson uh, from White Oak Farm. Uh, we're in northern Greenbrier County in the south eastern part of West Virginia. Uh, pretty rural area. Uh, we have about four acres of pick your own blueberries and it's the main part of our living. Ann and I both do a few things on the side depending on how good a year we have. Uh, but for the most part we make our living with four acres of pick your own blueberries. Well we, we start picking about the middle of June and pick usually through the end of July sometimes into the middle of August so six to eight weeks something like that. Uh, when it's over uh, we depend heavily on mulch. I spend a good bit of time mulching. There's usually a lot of repair projects. We net the four acres. We would have a lot less berries if we didn't do that. So there are nets to make and repair. Uh, and then starting about November the 1st, uh, we start pruning. Uh, when I did it by myself, prune every day, five days a week until the middle of March. Uh, we do have some help now, so it's a little less pruning. I'm getting a little older. Uh, and then by the time you're through with that, spring's here, and uh, we, we do a lot of other things on the farm. We garden and raise other things, mostly for ourselves. Uh, so you have a few months there to work on repair projects, do things, and uh, before you know it, it's time to put the nets back up about the 1st of June, and you're into it again. We have a broad mix of customers. Uh, we have a lot of Mennonites around here, and we have some Amish folks who drive from Virginia a long way away, people who want to pick a lot. Uh, a lot of our customers are older, um, but there's a, there's a big mix. You know, my kids are in high school and I just check some of their friends in. You know, they like to come out. Uh, we have a lot of people now who are here with young families and children who've been picking since they were teenagers. Uh, but it is a big mix. We have a lot of homesteaders. We have a lot of people who are not native West Virginians who like to do this. But we have a lot of our neighbors. Uh, Lewisburg's a, a fairly affluent town and so that, that's also uh, that, that's a group of people that really likes to come here and pick. And people come from a long way. We have a lot of our customers who come from Huntington and Charleston, which is two or three hours away across the state. A lot of people from Virginia and Maryland. Um, and, and some of those, they're here to visit Grandma. But some of those people are getting up early in the morning and getting here so that they can come and, you know, pick 100 pounds. Uh, so we have a good bit of a good bit of that. A lot of people who think it's worth it to drive a long way. The netting is uh, is for the birds. It's necessary. We live near some large dairy farms and so there are huge flocks of starlings and blackbirds here. Uh, but even just your ordinary songbirds, uh, young robins, first year robins that are on their first migration, they, they love fruit and they camp here and live here. Uh, the netting lets you, it lets the berries ripen so that I can leave them for a week with nobody picking and then you can come back in and the berries are really ripe. Uh, and so the other part of that is that we've taken our fields and divided them into five parts and the nets help with that because you know the nets make a barrier that you can't just wander wherever you want. 
but by having we're open five days a week and by having five fields and of course it doesn't always come out right but generally every morning I'm going to open up in a new field and you're going to have berries that haven't been picked for a week which means it's going to be good picking and of course you know like today we're really busy so by lunchtime it's already you got to dig in and hunt uh, other days it'll stay good all day long and and some days we have to say well so much for the schedule we're going to go to the next field uh, but generally it's a really good plan to let to let the berries ripen you know for about a week before you come back into them so that's what we're trying to do uh, yeah it's it's a little over 2600 uh, it's less than four acres if I had it to do over, I'd space them a little farther apart. They grow up to be bigger than, than uh, I thought they would. Uh, but uh, 2,600 and some plants, it does change every year. We, you lose a few every year and replant them, and then we've done some replanting on our own, just saying there's a variety that never gets picked, uh, you know, hard to ripen or really hard to prune, and we'll pull a row out and put something else in. Uh, generally, every row in the field you alternate and of course we did that first of all for pollination so that you never have two rows side by side but it also makes it good for pickers as long as you're in the row you're picking the same berry but if you don't like it turn around what's behind you is a different variety uh, and and there are 17 varieties in the field uh, and that's that's important that gives you early season mid season late season so you can stretch it out over eight weeks instead of two uh, but there's, and then, and then there's a, there's, people like different things. There's different uses. So you've got a lot of people who just eat them fresh, but a lot of people who like to bake, make jam. And different berries do better for different things. Ann and I both love to farm, and that's, that's how we met. Both of us uh, grew up with grandparents who farmed. So we didn't have to do the awful drudge work. It was what you did on vacation and it was lots of fun. And so we grew up loving farming instead of like a lot of farm kids who grew up hating it. Um, both of us wanted to farm and that's, that's how we met. We found out we just had lots of things in common. Uh, so we raised a huge garden. Uh, we fill a, a cellar, not as full as we did when all the kids were home. Our kids are growing up. Uh, but we can and freeze a lot of stuff. Uh, we keep a milk cow and milk, uh, make our own cheese and butter, uh, and uh, keep a couple of beef cows. Mostly, uh, you know, after that, it's a long way till the scale gets to where you're really making money. The more cows you keep past one or two, the more money you lose. But we make a couple acres of hay, which at that point, it's fun. I can almost always get it done before the rain gets it. Uh, and then we keep a small flock of sheep. We used to have about 20 ewes, but we have lots of coyote problems in West Virginia. So we've had to reduce it back to what I can sort of keep real close to the house here. Uh, and and that's, you know, that's something we enjoy doing. I'd like to keep more and may again in the future, but for right now, it's just a small flock. Um, we raise a whole lot of uh, other kinds of fruit, but just for ourselves, raspberries, blackberries, pears, apples, pizzas, plums. If you can gooseberries, currants, if you can grow it here, we'll try. Uh, we have a little greenhouse, um, it's 10 by 16, mostly to start plants, but it gives us a good bit of food out of season. That's, that's a good thing to try. Chickens? We keep chickens, about 30 chickens, and, and sell some eggs at this time of year and a few the rest of the year. We have a few customers, but uh, most of the rest of the year, not a lot. I looked for, I knew that I wanted to be a blueberry farmer. Um, I, when I was growing up, uh, I, I loved apples. I wanted to be, I wanted to have an orchard. I had some distant family who had an orchard where I worked uh, one fall and wanted to do that. But then I had a friend who planted 10 acres of apple trees and after they got to bearing, he just said, you know, there's no money in this, in this part of the world. Uh, it's, it's just a headache. Uh, but he had about 20 blueberry bushes and he said, man, I don't even advertise and people come knock on the door when they find out you have blueberries and they're real easy. Well, they're not real easy, but that was what got me. I knew I wanted to be a blueberry farmer even before we came here. Uh, and when Ann and I met, uh, I was more from the central part of the state and had my grandparents farm there and, and wanted, uh, but uh, she invited me to come down when we were dating, come down here and meet her parents. and. Uh, I got up early the next morning and went out and walked around her grandparents' farm. And by the, you know, an hour later, by the time everybody was up, I was sold. Greenbrier Valley is a really beautiful place. 
And so we, we got married and her dad gave us, uh, our first job was taking care of, the, her grandparents were gone at that point. And so we had an, a year's honeymoon taking care of the farm, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and we started looking, um, and I had already looked for a long time. We looked around here. Uh, prices here are very high because it's a place people like to come to retire because it's beautiful. Uh, we were taking the lady who lived next door home from church one day, and we had asked about uh, the house over here, which was empty then, still is. And we told her, we said, you know, we, we ask about the house over here, your next door neighbor, because we, you know, we almost were your neighbors, but they don't want to sell. She was quiet a minute. She said, but that's not my next door neighbor. That house that sits back at the end of the driveway, it's for sale. So we dropped her off and turned around and pulled up the driveway. And he had not even put a sign out. He had just been telling neighbors he'd like to sell this place. Um, but we pulled up and it was affordable. Uh, it says it's 15 acres. My brother's a surveyor and it's probably less than 12. Um, and most of that, you can't tell from here, but most of that's sinkholes. And we have a lot of caves here. Uh, but it's, it's certainly adequate for what we wanted to do. Uh, it's a small place and uh, it was affordable. And so we've been here now 24 years, I think. Um, and the first thing we did, we came in, bought it in the spring, and by that fall we were planting blueberries before we ever lived in the house. We have four kids and uh, we planted blueberries before the first one was born and she's 23 now and I finished with college, married and working in Maryland. Uh, I have two more in college and another one who will be a senior in high school this year. Uh, we homeschooled, we do have a lot of Mennonites here and there was a small Mennonite school for a while that the kids attended for several years uh, and then we, we homeschooled again. Uh, my two boys did decide when they went to high school that they would die if they didn't play soccer. And uh, so they ended up spending uh, their high school years at the high school, uh, which has worked out all right. Um, but not our preference, but it's worked out all right. Uh, but they're, they're almost grown, and uh, we've depended on that workforce a lot. And we're going to have to make some pretty big adjustments as they get older. And, and thinking about the next five or ten years, you know, what will change. Uh, farming's a really good family endeavor, a great way to raise kids. A lot harder to do with just two old people, um, especially because blueberry farming is not tractor work. It's you know a lot of the, a lot of my neighbors now that raise cattle and make hay, you can keep driving a tractor until you're 80, 85 years old. But a lot more of this is hand work, um, and so it's that's something to think about as we get older. Don't don't know what the retirement plan is for blueberry farmers. If people are interested in coming to visit, our website is uh, whiteoakberryfarm.com. We try to keep that updated daily, you know, picking conditions and, and any other information, what our schedule is. Our schedule is a little complicated. It's basically we're open mornings and evenings, 8 until noon, 4 till 8. Uh, it's usually too hot in the afternoon for us and for the pickers. Uh, Saturday it's 8 to 5 because people are going to come Saturday afternoon no matter what. Uh, closed on Wednesday and Sunday because I have to mow the grass and have to get a rest. Uh, but other than that, uh, runs for six to eight weeks. Uh, we also keep an email list. It will tell you when the season starts and you know if there's some big update, if something big happens that changes things, we can let people know. Well, I really appreciate Max letting us sit down and talk with him a little bit about his operation. He was actually had a pretty busy day that day, as you can see by all the cars parked in the driveway. Uh, but we really enjoyed that. You know, we're getting ready to go here probably in the next couple of weeks and pick again. Uh, it's getting to be that time of year. But be sure to check out their website, whiteoakberryfarm.com. And if you're in a driving distance of Rennick, West Virginia, you got to come check them out. Uh, their hours are posted on their website. Their website will let you know when they're open, uh, when are the best times, all those type of things. Kind of give you the condition of the blueberries. So uh, if you want some really good blueberries, check them out. Well, be also sure to check out, check out our website, redtoolhouse.com. You can find a lot of information about what goes on here. Also links to all of our videos we've ever done. And uh, we also post new videos three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Take care, everybody.